Hi guys, welcome back to Scrapping Scotland with me, the Scottish Scrapper. Today we are going to save this little fella from uh, landfill and we're going to scrap him out. This is a refrigerator compressor. Uh, so a lot of people take refrigerators to the scrap yard, uh, don't take the, uh, the compressor out of them. Uh, you know, if I see one sitting at the side of the road then I quickly stop and take the compressor out. Uh, because it is uh, one of these things that does contain quite a bit of copper. Uh, small refrigerators, you probably get about a half kilo of copper, uh, or nearly a pound if you're American. Uh, and for the larger ones, you know, up to two pounds, uh, and nearly a kilo of uh, copper you can get from them. Big hunk of steel as well. Uh, and, you know, you're not going to get a lot for this if you just send it to the scrappy as is. Uh, so I prefer to scrap them out. Uh, they are a thing that can create quite a bit of mess because it does contain quite a bit of oil inside these compressors. So the first thing to do uh, is, is drain the oil from it. Uh, in fact, the very first thing to do is take the pieces of copper off. So as you can see, uh, there's a couple of bits on the front there where copper piping was. Uh, there's another one round the back as well. On this side. Yeah, where a copper pipe was, and uh, I've snipped off that pipe uh, and put that in my, my little copper pipe bin, which is down here. So there's one of the pieces that come off, number two copper obviously, because there's a bit of solder there, and paint, so that's number two copper. Again, another piece here that came off of it. Again, number two, you can snip that end bit off and it'll be number one copper. Uh, just snip off the bit with solder and paint. Get a little bit more money for number one than you get for number two. And there was the other piece. Okay, so a few little bits of copper immediately. Uh, and then, obviously, as I say, you drain the oil. So I've stuck a hole in the top of it with a six mil. Uh, screw bit, drill bit, metal drill bit obviously, and uh, drilled a hole on top of it, and then drained out the oil. So there's the oil, that's kind of the amount in it. Uh, obviously, like I say, you want to make sure you're disposing of this properly as well. Uh, I will put that in a container and take that round to the recycling centre, who has a disposable piece for uh, oil. You certainly don't want to put that into the environment and you don't want to put it down a sink, that's for sure. So uh, always always dispose of stuff responsibly. So I'll put that in a jug. I'll wait till the jug's full uh, if I do a few of these. And then we will uh, dispose of it in the right manner. So the key thing there, like I say, is you drain all that out. It may be that there's still a little bit of oil in there once you cut it open. But, you know, once we start grinding the, the top of this off, you know, there's no kind of fire hazard there. It won't catch fire or anything like that. Uh, just may make a little bit of a mess. So, obviously, I'd rather not do that. Uh, so, drain it as much as you possibly can. And then we can start grinding it open. Okay. So, when we're cutting this, obviously, this piece here, the join, is not what you where you want to cut because it's uh, a very thick piece of steel. So you want to cut a little bit below uh, where the, the steel is a little bit thinner and uh, just work your way around. So that's what I'm going to do. a couple of things in to stop it moving. Okay. And crack on again.
good start. A little bit of smoke from it, but as I say, it won't catch fire, so uh, nothing to worry about there. I'll turn this around a little bit so we can get to the other side. Again, jam something under it so it doesn't move and continue my way around it. As you can see, nice clean cut in there. Uh, may co cost you one blade, uh, but hopefully nothing more than that. That's actually not too hot. Can get a little bit hot sometimes, but actually not too bad. So we'll turn it over. And then we'll start from this side. piece so I'm done I'll just uh, make the cut through <laughs> okay we'll turn that round again and make our final cut apologies for the sniffles uh, I'm coming out the other side of a little cold so I have got a bit of the sniffles today, I do apologise. Okay, and um, I've got about another, maybe three inches to cut through here. <laughs> actually it's not fine 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 you have a little bit of oil spillage but only a little bit and I caught it on my glove so it's not too bad it's not made a mess on my bench which is always good uh, move aside my uh, snips okay so we can lift the lid off. Okay, so you can see, nice bit of steel. Okay, put that to one side. And then we get to the motor that's inside. So, just having a check round to see if it's attached anywhere. I need to kind of remove it from. So there's a couple of small bits attached that I'll use my snips just to Cut through the edge. There's one. I think that may be the only piece that's actually attached. Let's have a look if we can lift it out now. Okay, there is one more piece. Uh, 
On the side, put that over the edge and make a quick snip here. There we go. Okay. And there's the the bottom. So it's okay, a little tiny bit of oil still in there, not much. A uh, couple of springs in the bottom of the compressor as well. You can see three springs. Stop it rattling around. Uh, and then there's a little plug on this side as well. As you can see, it connects it to the motor. Okay, so we'll clean that out later. That leaves us with our, our motor. So there's our motor, as you can see, nice big chunks of copper there, yeah? Absolutely lovely. So those are the ones we want to, to get it off. But to do that, to take it off, uh, it looks like we'll have to remove uh, some bolts. Uh, let's see if we can do that nice and easily from pliers, or if we're going to need something a little bit more substantial. from underneath it just in case it's no it's definitely just bolts okay so what I will do is I will pause it just now and I'll find the right bit for this so I can unscrew these bolts okay so looking at these pieces here that one's slightly bigger than this one uh, this one looks like a 7 mil, so we will undo this one first of all. Just a couple of turns is all it takes, and then we can use our fingers. Okay, let's wash one out. Several on the side here as well, on the side plate. Okay, it's all them loose. Okay, I'm this is uh, the motor outside this motor here is all cast aluminium as well. So it looks like an aluminium piece or aluminium for you American viewers. Uh, tissue and dry this one off. This has got a little bit of oil in it. probably wear gloves doing this then I wouldn't get such oily fingers but it's fine it's a little bit of cast aluminium there uh, well I thought it was aluminium but actually when I do the old magnet test it's kind of semi sticky I don't know if it's just the end or whatever but it's certainly not aluminium I don't know if it's zinc maybe uh, I'm not quite sure, but it's, uh, it sticks a little bit. Sorry, unscheduled pause there. Uh, that's what happens when you got kids that are constantly wanting something. I'm sure you can relate. Uh, so, that's the ones at the top off. Uh, I'll try and take off this one as well. Actually got a little eight mil bit for the screwdriver here, so hopefully you can just put that on, take it straight off. There we go. Get that one out. Okay, turn the motor over. These look like the seven mil ones as well. Take it or that one. Mm, that 
one's slipping. So let's just go to the next one just now. One seems to be slipping as well. Doesn't look like it's going to make it easy for me. That's fine. There are many ways to skin a cat. It's not going to be using that. Okay. That's fine. Other side works. I do apologise for the constant sniffling. It's not COVID, that's at least that. Just a cold. Actually, a cold that was brought on. From getting my flu jag. Go figure. Yeah. We'll give you a flu jag to stop you getting severe flu, but we'll give you the flu. We'll certainly give you a bad cold, which is what it's done. Okay, there's a little nut on the bottom side of this as well, so. In case of holding one and unscrewing the other. Now just to say in this video I'm not going to take all the copper out. I'm just going to release the copper from the motor. Uh, I'm not going to uh, harvest all the copper at the moment there's lots of ways to do that uh, what I tend to do is I well I'll show you actually what my kind of preferred method to get the copper out but I'll not actually go ahead and do it but I'll walk you through what I would do there's lots of videos on line anyway about you know how to take these off Uh, some people have their own method, so it's not a one-stop shop for everyone. But there is different ways to do it. Uh, it's really just about what works best for you, you know. Uh, a lot of people don't like to cut it and grind it because it means that there's uh, a little bit of loss there. Personally, I think the loss is minimal and it's probably the most efficient way to do it, so... This one's taking a little bit of time to come out. Still, still catching, so... There we go. That's that one out. And that leaves us with one final one on this side. Which we'll get out. Again, that side's not working, so... Stubborn little one, this one definitely doesn't like it, so we'll try a different method like the mole grips. Do you love the mole grips? Great little tool, snaps down nice and firm on the, the bolt on the nut. And uh, hopefully it gives us a little bit better purchase. Okay. No. So there is obviously another way to take this off. If it's not going to play ball. Which is what I'm going to do because it's uh, it's had its shot and now it's going to get colour.
make sure that that worked out, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> bad so that one comes out so why is this one not coming out we just need to pry it oh there we go we got there that feels like a piece of steel to me it's a little bit hot so yeah definitely a piece of steel stick that in our steel bin okay now we can lift the top top piece off. So here's our copper within our big steel casing. This piece here, uh, I was hoping I could just slip that piece out but it looks like it's attached to some sort of piston at the top which is a little bit strange. Not sure what that's all about or how that actually works. Uh, so there's any other pieces I can pull on. One piece there. Okay. I can see as I look through, it says attached pretty well. Uh, and to be honest, I don't think I'm actually going to try and take that off. What I'm going to do is this looks like copper. This piece here. So I'm going to try and, uh, well, I'm not going to try, I'm going to definitely cut that piece off. Okay, and there's a copper piece. Okay, just give it the old magnet test because it might not be copper uh, or it may have something in the inside it that's not copper. Uh, there's a, definitely a big kind of steel piece here on the end, as you can see, uh, that does move. So I'm going to try and pull that piece off. It's like a, like a bit of a spring or something, I don't know. I'll look at the cut as well, and the cut on this that was made actually looks silver, so I don't think this is copper. Maybe a little bit of that little camera shot. Wouldn't be very helpful. Just trying to unwind this piece. Try to pull it off the end. Keep pushing it up and pull it off. There you go. So there's the steel spring piece off, sticking it on my magnets, yeah, it does look like copper, but like I say when I cut it I could see the silver piece, and as you can see it's not copper because it sticks to my magnet, so it's a bit of a disappointment, thought that was an additional piece of copper there, but it's not, so we will uh, fold it up and stick that in the steel bin. So this piece, I say, it looks to me like there's quite a bit of uh, aluminium in this, so I definitely want to get this piece out. Uh, I'm not sure the best way to do that, to be honest. Maybe something I'll revisit. Uh, I'll maybe knock the piston out. Let's see if we can get to it from there. Uh, after I get that piston piece off. I'm not quite sure how we get it out, but that is definitely cast aluminium, I think. Actually, it's not. It's steel as well, so it's just telling me that there's no point. That bit, piece at the bottom here, this is cast aluminium. 
that's cast aluminium, big bit of steel in the middle, steel there, steel there, steel there, steel there, steel there. So it's all steel. So there's no point in me taking this apart. Uh, so I'll just clean it up and I'll stick that in my steel pile. Okay. And then that leaves us, of course, with the copper. So as you can see, it's a nice big windy copper in there. Yeah, lovely. And what we'll do with that is we will cut it all the way around the edge. In fact, I've got the grinder here, so why don't we just do it, okay? We'll cut it around the edge of this, and then we can pry it through the other side, okay? I think the plan was good the execution was poor because the uh, should have blades actually thick enough to make it all the way through which uh, there you go uh, so should still be able to get it off I think it went through far enough that I can get and then clip a couple of bits What happens when you use a blade that's uh, not new? Been used for other things. It's obviously the same blade I use to uh, cut through the steel of the outer casing. So there's the first piece. Okay. Obviously, we remove all this binding as well from that. That's the first piece. It leaves us then with a nice kind of neat piece here. Yeah, and we can just bang that through with a screwdriver. That should loosen it this side and then we can pull it through. So for this piece, we want to stick it in the vise. I know a lot of you will probably be saying you should have stuck it in the vise ages ago. Not the best uh, way to handle a grinder. And you're probably right, you know. Probably right. Okay, so let's make sure that's nice and tight in the vise. Get ourselves a nice big screwdriver. We can actually just start locking this through.
Okay, we'll work it all the way around. Try and not hammer your hand, that's a good idea. I wasn't actually going to do this on this video, but it doesn't actually take that long to do, so it's worthwhile. So I can show you the complete copper recovery. I will say before I finish this though is uh, I don't have scales out here in my workshop at the moment so I won't be able to show you the actual weight but take it from me it's going to be about half a kilo. Okay, so that's what all the way around now. And, uh, hopefully what we can do now is we can turn it over and pry pieces out. Okay, we might be able to do it from this side. And as it's all still binded, it shouldn't fall everywhere. Which is great, because we don't want it falling everywhere. So I'll turn it around even better. So you can see it's not quite a lot of it up. Yeah, it's not all completely out, but it's uh, made really great inroads to doing that. So tighten up the vise. Use my big sturdy screwdriver as a pry and then start prying that out. Okay, so there we go. There we go, that's how easy it is. Okay, look at that beautiful copper. Yeah, beautiful, nice, bright copper. Okay, so there's what we've got. There's our copper. I showed you before the copper that came from the external piece. Uh, you've got a huge hunk of steel here. Okay, just take the plastic out of it. You don't have to. Always try and make sure the metal I'm taking is uh, nice and clean with uh, no contamination, even if it is just steel. I don't know, it's just uh, the way I work. So we'll take all these pieces out. chunk of steel okay all right our case in top of it and the bottom a little bit of copper still in there so we will uh, we will chop that off as well yeah, a little bit of copper wire a little copper pipe there we'll take that out yeah uh, but they're just ready to fall off as you can see, it is. I'll focus on it, but possibly not. Really, you can see the copper colour there. The inside of the pipe, definitely copper. I'll try and get this other piece out. And bend it away. Cut it there. As easy as it looks, unfortunately. Be careful because obviously, slam your hand against the outer ring of this after it's been grinded, then there's a good chance you're going to cut yourself. And I don't fancy cutting myself with the uh, dirty oil in there. Okay, we've got it off though. Oh. Two little pieces of copper there. Okay, 
Okay, again, give them the old mag magnet test. Uh, oh, so that one's got a little bit of something stuck to the end of it. Find the other side. So, let me just check this piece as well. That bit's fine. Definitely all copper. So this piece has got a little bit of steel somewhere here. Just try and cut off that edge bit. It's probably why it's so difficult to cut. That's so what I'm going to do actually. I'm just going to stick that in the base and cut it off. I'm going to be trying to cut through steel pipe with my steps. That's never going to work. And we do have the grinder here, so let's just use that. Even though it's a little bit, it's uh, all adds up. Okay, look. So let's cut the end off. because uh, well, as you can see it's now half the size it was so that's never great can't see from inside where it is so I'll just grind it until it stops sparking it's going to <laughs> end up with literally nothing but you know what it's a tiny little bit it goes in the pile rather than not in the pile you know so okay so that's it that's the uh, tear down of the fridge compressor as you can see lovely queen copper from the motor in the middle so uh, very much worthwhile taking these things apart and taking the copper out Okay, I hope you watched that. I hope you enjoyed watching that video. Uh, any comments, then please leave them below. Uh, and if you liked the video, then please do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we will catch you on the next teardown. Bye now.